The mystery of, quote, unexplained aerial phenomena known to most of us as UFOs and the many strange sightings witnessed by Navy pilots in recent years. Officials tell ABC News an upcoming intelligence report concludes they are not part of any secret government program, but there's no definitive answer to what they actually are. ABC's Martha Raditz explains. They are sightings that have alarmed and mystified U.S. naval aviators for years. Spherical objects flying thousands of miles an hour with no wings darting side to side. This unidentified object flying over restricted military airspace off the East Coast. Oh my gosh, dude. Wow, look at it. Look at it fly. More than 120 incidents with mostly U.S. Navy personnel prompting Congress to demand answers. Tonight, officials telling ABC News the upcoming intelligence report on these unidentified flying objects has found there is no definitive explanation for the vast majority of those objects. No explanation for what they are or where they came from. There's a whole fleet of them. Look on the ASA. My gosh. We're going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. Oh, thank you. One official adding there is no evidence the objects are linked to alien spacecraft, but that leaves open the question of whether that has been ruled out. The Pentagon asked repeatedly today, but not commenting ahead of the release of the report. A U.S. official saying that the only thing that has been determined is that these objects are not part of some highly classified U.S. program that would have been secret to even those Navy pilots. ABC's chief global affairs correspondent Martha Raditz joins us now. Martha, so when is this intelligence report expected to be released? And with so many unanswered questions, what happens next in the investigation? It is supposed to be officially released at the end of the month, Stephanie, but the investigations will likely continue in some form. This is just far too serious to just let it drop, especially since those objects appear to outperform anything the U.S. now has, Stephanie. Incredible. Martha Raddatz in Washington for us. Thank you so much. For more now on the UFO mystery, our place in the cosmos, and the search for life beyond our planet, we are joined by world-renowned astrophysicist and director of the Hayden Planetarium, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Thank you so much for your time tonight. Yeah, very happy to share it with you. Thank you. You have a new book out, Cosmic Queries, Star Talk's Guide to Who We Are, How We Got Here, and Where We're Going. We will get to that in just a moment. But first, UFOs. You are an astrophysicist. Obviously, you're well aware of the videos of UFOs that are out there and the theories. Is there anything you've seen in these videos or the theories that makes you believe our planet has, has had visitors from out of this world? Well, actually, you've already gotten to the book because an entire chapter in there is, are we alone in the universe? Um, I, I and many fellow astrophysicists, we spend all of our time looking up, almost all of our time. And so we have a, a pretty acute sense of what can happen in the sky, in the daytime sky, in the twilight sky, in the evening sky, what the sun, moon, stars, and planets do. And I've never seen anything that I could not explain. And that's typical of many of my colleagues as well. So personally, I've never, all the UFOs might, that might be identified by others, for me, they're IFOs, <laughs> identified <laughs> flying objects. That's incredible. Now, flipping a few pages in your book, moving to chapter seven of your book, you explore the question, are we alone in the universe? As you just mentioned, in our lifetimes, do you think we will be able to more definitively answer that question? Yeah, so alone uh, to a biologist, is, is there any other kind of life at all, out there at all, microbial or otherwise? And so then life on Earth would not be alone in the galaxy. And there's very high expectation that the search for life in the universe will ultimately prove fertile, fertile because uh, life on Earth 
thrives in the presence of liquid water. And one of NASA's mantras has been, follow the water. And so Mars had evidence of liquid water long in its past. There's a water ocean beneath the frozen surface of some, some of Jupiter's moons. Uh, the, and so you, and that's just in our own backyard. So as long as we keep exploring, I think the chances are high that we'll at least know whether or not we're the only life in the solar system. And I, I bet I bet we're not alone in that regard. Are we the only intelligent life in the universe? Uh, here's what I would ask you. I'd say, who decided that humans were intelligent? Well, humans did. <laughs> so that's our own definition. Uh, how audacious of us to think that some other life form out there is, is as non-intelligent as we are on some cosmic scale of intelligence where we could be to them what worms are to us. Gosh, this is so interesting. I'm geeking out over here. So <laughs> science and astronomy is so much about trying to explain what's happening, but how do you grapple with something we can't explain? Uh, to be a scientist, you have to be comfortable with the questions themselves because it's the questions that guide us. And if we confront something that we don't understand, we don't say, my gosh, I don't understand it. There has to be a reason. Let me have a reason now. That's, that's a level of impatience that's inc <laughs> incommensurate with what it is to be a scientist. So uh, if I did see lights in the sky or, or the Navy videos of, of maneuvering Tic Tacs, um, I'd say, I, I don't know what that is. Uh, let's keep checking. Um, Sure. And by the way, uh, given how much money the Pentagon gets from our federal budget, I'd want some percentage of that budget <laughs> to check on stuff in the sky to, to make sure that we are secure against whatever that is. OK, so I have no problems with that being a, a, a program within the federal government. But to suggest that uh, these are visitors from another planet that are somehow intrigued by us and only really show up in front of Navy pilots, or not only, but you know, these, these are the best data people are bringing forth. That's just be odd behavior, I would think, for aliens. That's just me. <laughs> Right, and I have to share with you that I took my sons to the Hayden Planetarium recently, and they had a blast. They loved it. They call themselves scientists already. So I'll have to share with them this line where they have to be comfortable with those questions. It's a great, great line. But given the vastness of the universe and the distance of galaxies, do you think it's possible alien life forms could enter our solar system without us even knowing? Well, consider if they traveled from star to star, they are way more advanced than we are, technologically for sure, probably intellectually. And if they really didn't want us to see them, I'm pretty sure we would never see them, okay? And so the idea that we would only sort of know they're there with monochromatic fuzzy video, and they're not there in anyone's photo that anyone has taken, the six billion photos and videos uplifted to the internet every single day. That's half of the population of the world has a smartphone. We're crowdsourcing the possibility of an Earth invasion. We're crowdsourcing the data on that. And nobody has high quality, any kind of high definition color imagery of it. And so I'm disappointed. Uh, in your book, you mention how you wonder whether the entire universe is just a snow globe on the living room mantle of an alien. They're, they're just watching us. Maybe apart from that, what's the number one thing that fascinates you right now about the cosmos? <laughs> How did you find that? that, that <laughs> Got great producers that, here. The book, the, the, I, occasionally I tweet about aliens, or, or the, and, and the book has sort of tweets. They're like biscuits. The, the rewards for having read that far <laughs> into the book. So um, I'm sorry. So now I lost track of your question. It was. What's the number one thing that fascinates you right now about the cosmos? Oh, uh, how much we don't know. I mean, I, I, I bask in that ignorance. We don't know what dark matter is. Uh, it's 85% of the gravity of the universe. We don't know what that is. Dark energy is making us accelerate. Um, and we add that up, it's 95% of the universe. So we can quantify. We know so much about the universe that we've quantified our ignorance. 
Okay? And so that's kind of an extraordinary place to be. And what was around before the universe, before the Big Bang? How will it all end? These are very big questions that, in fact, were all collected into the Cosmic Queries book. That's why um, we produced that book from our Star Talk staff. Fascinating. So many unknowns. Well, thank you so much, Neil deGrasse Tyson. His book, Cosmic Careers, Star Talk's Guide to Who We Are, How We Got Here, and Where We're Going, is available for and purchase. And one last thing, I'm going to tell you this. Yes, go for it. If, if the aliens land, mm -hmm. I'll let you know, okay? Please do. Please come back. If you see I will one, totally... you've got the floor here. <laughs> and I'll be up in the aliens' face, and I'll, I will totally bring them to you and the White House or wherever else yes. they got to go. We've been looking okay. for you. <laughs> All mm -hmm. right. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.